Hello, this is Catherine at I Know I Need to Stop Talking. Hello, lovelies. Happy New Year. It's a brand new, shiny year and it's fucking pissed it down so far. I mean, maybe it's been nicer. We have. I mean, what's with the weather? Why is it so grey and miserable? It's like, literally, it's the weather's going, oh, it's fucking January, it's going to be fucking shit. It's January, it's a pandemic, you're all fucked, aren't you? I mean, come on, weather, throw me a bone here. It is fucking, fucking miserable. But yes, Happy New Year. It does mean I can no longer say to people, see you next year, which literally for the entire of December I enjoy doing to people every time I know I'm not going to see them again until January. Never gets old. I still, I'm literally sitting here giggling to myself about saying to people, see you next year, and like, it seems like it's a long way away. Way, even though it's not actually that far away and if you have to explain a joke Catherine you've probably not made a very funny joke in the first place oh it made, made, made me laugh anyway but yes brand new year god tell you what before we get on to Christmas New Year's Eve it's a bit fucking late isn't it it's a bit much staying up till midnight and I 20 something me is like looking now at 40 year old me going for fuck's sake what's wrong what's wrong with you what's wrong with you but oh midnight I mean, it is like you have to treat it as a marathon, not a sprint, don't you? But we went up to my mum's for New Year. My mum is in the unfortunate position of having her birthday on New Year's Day. Fucking hell. If you like want to think of the day of the year when people are least likely to want to party, it is New Year's Day, isn't it? Um, well, we actually had a, we had a very nice New Year's Day, but yeah, New Year's Eve. We're like staying up, we're like, okay, come on, let's let's play so My kids are now at the age where not only can they stay up for New Year, they don't even bat a fucking eyelid at staying up till New Year. They're like, oh yeah, of course, yeah, it's like, yeah, you would stay up till midnight, you know. Jamie's probably not been to bed before midnight at any point over the holidays. Whereas I'm sitting there like, I'm really tired, but I can't give in. I'm going to have some more Diet Cokes. If you drink too much alcohol, then you go to sleep. You know, you don't want to fuck it all up by passing out in the downstairs loo. And like, you're slogging it away. That last half an hour, honestly, I think I, I think I felt like, I've never run a marathon, and I never will run a marathon, but I think I felt like I imagine marathon runners must feel on that final mile when you're just like, oh God, I'm so tired and so broken, and I'm never going to do this again, but the finish line is there. I can just see it. And then we got to midnight, and then the fireworks were shit, weren't they? Very angry about the fireworks this year, perhaps unreasonably so. And it's obviously, it's not good to have fireworks because it's very bad for the environment. And goodness knows if the temperature right now is telling us anything, it's that we're completely fucked when it comes to climate change. This is turning out to be a very cheerful podcast, isn't it? I'm, sure, I'm sorry, we'll get, on to, we'll get on to some fun and some laughter and lightness in a bit. But I did feel very angry about the, the fireworks. It started so brilliantly. Giles Torreira, one of my favourite actors, doing fantastic poem. And then there were some lovely drones, loved drones, and then there were some fireworks. And then it was all just a bit all over the place. But I think possibly I was just a bit tired and grumpy because I'd stayed up too late. And really what I should have done is gone to bed about half past nine and I'd have been much happier. So yeah, New Year's, New Year's Eve, it's a little bit, it's a little bit overrated, but we made it, we made it, I survived, I made it, that's my, that's my annual attempt to stay up till midnight, tick in the box, done, never doing it again, until the next time, until the next time. So how were your Christmases, how were your New Year's? I'm really conscious that it's a, it's a fucking full on time of year, isn't it? And for some people it's lovely and amazing, and for some people it's just a bit fucking full on and so I kind of I thought I'd like share some highlights from from our, our Christmas and New Year and we, and we have been really lucky we have had a lovely one but please know that I'm doing so fully in the knowledge that it's not an easy period of time for for everybody and if you've had a shit one Covid has fucked up so many people's plans I know so many people whose plans have had to change and it's just oh I think we said this last last podcast I just feel we've fucking done the pandemic now we've done this tick in the box I've done pandemic we've done pandemic so many times can we move on past pandemic level no we're stuck on fucking pandemic level fuck's sake fuck's sake but yeah we we were very lucky here we stayed at Touchwood we stayed covid free as did sort of all of our immediate family which I know how lucky we are so like I say if you didn't if you were poorly or, or just if you didn't get to spend Christmas with the people that you love and you wanted to be with I am so sorry. It's it's so unutterably shit. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, please, by this time next year, we'll be in a really different place. And I mean that in a good way, because I feel like we have to specify to the universe these days. We want to be in a better place, not like a different place, which is like apocalypse with dinosaurs re-storming the earth. That'll be next, won't it? Dinosaurs. And I, at this point, I'd probably be like, yep, OK, we've gone from pandemic level to dinosaur level. Cool. Excellent. Marvellous. For balance, though, because we did have a lovely Christmas, for balance, I woke up on New Year's Day with some, I tell you what, I hate getting old, some horrendous, I think like a stomach bug, like not a very serious stomach bug, but like loads of stomach pain and feeling horrendous and I'm feeling like, yay, I really want to do a two hour journey in the car. But spoiler alert, all went well. We're all, all was good there. But I don't know if it's, it's just me that, you know, you get to this age and where was like when I was 
in my 20s I'd be like oh okay I've got a bit of a stomach bug I, I wake up in pain I'm like well which one of my internal organs is failing now which part and then you go to Google Google I have this pain death Dr Google says death so yeah I have had a little bit of an unpleasant 24 hours I mean it's effective I suppose when it comes to like shifting Christmas excesses it's not a particular diet plan that I would recommend because it's fucking hurts and feels miserable and you can't eat any of the nice stuff you're like mm, surrounded by Christmas food I mean fucking hell we've got so we've got so much Christmas food in this house I could cater for Christmas for the next year for the entire nation I've done that classic thing that I always tell myself that I won't do which is it's one day, it's Christmas, it's not a nuclear apocalypse. But the trouble is, I think with the last two years that we've had, I think we probably are all subconsciously planning for, but if there is a nuclear apocalypse, I have enough toilet roll to, to get me through any amount of nuclear apocalypse. I don't even know if a nuclear apocalypse is a thing. Have I made that up? I mean, it sounds bad, doesn't it? Well, in, in any scenario, I imagine you would need toilet roll, and I do indeed have plenty of toilet roll. I have no idea where I was going with any part of that thought process. I kind of thought as I was driving back from my arms, I was like, podcast, okay, maybe this year, maybe in 2022, maybe we should make it a bit more structured and a bit more focused. And as you can see, I'm failing absolutely fucking miserably. And I'm also swearing loads. And I promised myself that I would try and swear slightly less. And again, I, I mean, this is why I don't make New Year's revolutions because we're they're, they're just doomed to failure really, aren't they? They are doomed to absolute failure. So while Christmas was genuinely lovely, it was quiet, it was just us at home. I say it was quiet, so it's never fucking quiet when you've got me, Mr. I Know I Need to Stop Talking, Jamie, Beth, and the three mad cats. I, I do feel like I've spent a disproportionate percentage of my Christmas trying to get cats out of Christmas trees. It's the first year they've done it. I literally don't know what's gone in their mad little heads. Now, to be fair, Sandwich, very good girl, has gone nowhere near the Christmas trees because she's not a total dick. ASAP, despite being the maddest of the cats, has actually been pretty restrained. Prexit's been like a fucking rat up a trouser leg. Honestly, every time my back is turned, I was on Christmas Eve, I was in the kitchen prepping all the Christmas food. I could hear a noise from beside me, and I think I said on, on last podcast that we've got a very nice, lovely, tasteful Christmas tree in the lounge, which is completely Mr. I know I need to stop talking's domain. It's all beautiful and coordinated and gold. And then in the room where I sit next to the kitchen, you've just got my Christmas tree and it's covered in festive tan. I fucking love it. It's got tinsel. I wish I could describe this tinsel. I'm looking at it right now. It's like the love child of, I don't even know. It's just really bright and pink and hysterical. And I absolutely fucking love it. Anyway, I was prepping my Christmas food and I heard this like noise in my random tree. And so I turned around and Brexit, I, and you know, I get the idea that cats might want to like, play with baubles on trees. I can even understand how cats might go, I'm going to climb this tree because I'm a cat and we climb trees. But no, Brexit seems to have taken Christmas trees this year to be a really, really good place for a bed. So she's climbed halfway up it and then she's kind of like got into the branches and she's curled up like she's going to sleep. I'm like, what are you doing? Get out of the Christmas tree. But then you don't want to try and reason with a cat when they're in a Christmas tree because that only ever ends badly. So yeah, I feel like I've spent a disproportionate amount of time trying to get Brexit both out of Christmas trees, but also, oh, she's absolutely better. She doesn't like people. She doesn't really like people at all. She likes Beth, because I think, I, I don't even know, I think Beth's menaced Brexit into, into liking her. But for some unknown reason, she's decided that while she doesn't like her, she likes to inconvenience us. So she likes to come in, jump through the first floor windows at night, and then go and sleep on the landing in the most trippable position imaginable. So, for example, night before last I came out, she was sleeping on the landing, right at the edge of the top of the stairs. Like literally, if you were gonna create a trip hazard, that is, that is the ultimate definition of, of trip hazard. It is Brexit, she is an absolute fucking liability. Um, but I did really enjoy that when I put the post onto, onto Facebook of Brexit in the tree. I absolutely fucking loved all the pictures that we got back of people's cats. And I think there was even like a cockerel in a tree, which is brilliant because what, what else better sums up the true meaning of Christmas than a cockerel in a tree? Fucking, I, I love the randomness of life. It delights me every single day. Christmas definitely changes as your kids get older. In my opinion, not in a bad way, but that's because I'm really, really bad on being woken up early in the morning. So as I as I shared on, on last, it wasn't even last week's podcast, God, I, I tell you what, I've got no clue what day of the week we're on. It's very confusing with both Christmas, New Year and a bank holiday thrown into the mix. I think it's Sunday, but to add insult to injury and extra confusion, Ocado are coming later and that usually happens on Saturdays. 
yeah, I'm going to be very confused by, by the end of this week. Yeah, I've got no idea where I was going with that train of thought even slightly. But I think I was talking about, yeah, Christmas gets gets strange and gets, gets different as, as your kids get older. And as I say, in my opinion, in, in a very good way. But that's where I was going. So I shared on last fortnight's podcast, whenever it was, about, you know, kind of, we've never had to get up crazy early on Christmas Day. Because I've always said to my children, if you wake up before it gets light, Father Christmas might not have had time to come and bring your presents. And consequently, I've never been up before 8am on Christmas Day, which to me is an acceptable time to to get up some of these 3 a.m. starts, fuck that shit. But this year, I feel like we've almost gone too far the other way. I mean, it was like nine o'clock. I was like, up, I was going to Mr. I know, and he stopped talking. I might as well have a bath, shall I? Because what else? My kids are like snoring. They're, they're flat out. He's like, yeah. So it was probably, well, I think Beth dragged Jamie out of bed probably about 10 o'clock. But yeah, it's kind of, oh, tell you what, if I had heard somebody saying this when my kids were little, even though I had managed to get them to sleep in, you know, till the heady heights of like eight o'clock, I'd have been like, shut up, shut up, fuck, fuck that. No, it's nonsense. Don't believe it. But it does happen. It does get so much better. And it's just lovely because it's just chilled and relaxed. And yeah, you're not hysterically tired all day. Just remember spending every Christmas exhausted. Because when I was younger, and when I say younger, I mean like in my early 20s, I used to still get too excited the night before Christmas to sleep. So I feel like I've probably spent 80% of all Christmas days absolutely fucking knackered. So yeah, the, to wake up this year, having had a good night's sleep, I was like, I'm full of the joys of spring. I'm living, you know, living the dream, living the dream. We had some lovely and some, and some utterly random presents as well. I mean, I do love a good random Christmas gift, but we had some brilliant Christmas gifts this year. And we, we don't tend to go to town on presents for our kids because they're lucky and they've got loads of stuff, but we probably splashed out a little bit more than we would do usually this year. And I've got a video which I wish I could share with you all, which is Beth opening her present. And God, one of the things I absolutely love about my kids is just how utterly grateful they are for stuff and just this expression of sheer joy on her face. And it wasn't so much the present or the value of the present, it was how much she hadn't even ever believed this was something she was going to get until she did get it. But I also then absolutely love the faces on my, my kids' faces, so I hope this doesn't sound like virtue signaling, it. it's definitely not intended to, but I just think it's a really cool thing to do and it might be something that you guys would want to do for, for kids or family members or whoever. So one of the things that we've done for the last few years is we've always tried to support, there's a charity called Centrepoint, who basically support in particular young people who are homeless, we're getting them off the streets and providing support, etc. And one of the things we're really lucky to be able to do now is this year we were able to pay for what effectively will be a room for a young homeless person for an entire year. And so this came and the kids opened that up. And I love how happy they feel when they see that we can do stuff like this. Like, you know, I, I'm like all parents, I doubt myself fucking constantly. I'm constantly going, oh, I'm doing a bad job. Am I getting things right? Are my kids fucked up? But, you know, to see them open this, to see that, like, you know, they're going for a whole year. I'm like, yeah, for a whole year. And then to hear Jamie going, yeah, and that, that's amazing, mum, because, you know, that, that makes such a difference to, like, your chances of getting a job if you've got home. And you and I'm like, yes, you get it, you get it. And it gives me hope, like, this this next generation, it gives me hope that, you know, there is kind of, like, there is there is a good future. God, I fucking hope so. I really, really, really do hope so. But, yeah, that was that was amazing. I love a chocolate orange. That is always my greatest gift for all. My dad buys me a chocolate orange every single year. This year, Mr. I know I need to stop talking. The men in my life trying to outdo one another. Mr. I know I need to stop talking. Bought me eight chocolate oranges. Eight chocolate oranges. Haven't even eaten them all yet. I couldn't even manage to eat all of those. But yeah, eight chocolate oranges. So basically, there's eight of my five a day. Done. Tick. Just there. Boom. Cooked Christmas dinner for only the second time in my entire life. Went pretty well. Forgot to cook the Yorkshire puddings, but... I was only doing that. I mean, my stepdaughter told me that we needed to have Yorkshire puddings. Who, who, I'm in a straw poll. Who, who, who has Christmas? Who has Yorkshire puddings as part of a Christmas dinner? I, I feel like there's probably lots of you. Anyway, I forgot them. So they're still sitting in the, in the freezer. But that, that aside, it was good. It was successful. I tell you what, here's, here's a game changer for you. This is my game changer of Christmas dinner this year. Stuff that I didn't even know that I needed until I got it. And I realised how much I needed it. A gravy separator. I know, right? You probably didn't even know such a thing existed and neither did I until I went onto the internet and said, how do I get the fat out of my gravy? Again, phrases that I never thought I would be uttering this time pre-pandemic before I'd even learnt to cook a roast dinner. And there's this little device. It looks like a really shit jug, basically, because it looks like a jug where stuff would fall out, but it doesn't. And you put the meat juices in the gravy separator thing and then you 
pour it and magically the fat comes off the top and the gravy cut and it's fucking brilliant i absolutely fucking love it i mean it's tragic isn't it that i'm this excited about a gravy separator but honestly i'm telling you it's game changing you you will never look back i reckon even if you're vegetarian roast your carrots and, and shove your carrot juice in there i mean i'm not sure it'll do anything but it's just it's so cool oh god love a love a gravy separator did loads of walking i do love a walk i even love a rainy day walk and it's a fucking good job isn't it because it's fucking pissed it down for the entire of christmas but i did indeed go out on christmas day afternoon solo because none of my family liked to walk and had a lovely walk my dad came down and we got to go out and do a walk together and it was just lovely and amazing and again you just feel so lucky and i am truly saying this with you know so much love for all those of you who couldn't perhaps be with with loved ones but it's just these little things i've discovered the pandemic's made me realize I need very little, I don't need to like go for like, you know, swanky meals or big trips and stuff like that. I just need to be able to spend a bit of time with, with the people that I love. And oh God, it's fucking marvellous when you're able to do that. It really, really is. We've got into, as a family over Christmas, we've got into a game. I think I'm going to pronounce this wrong, but this is how they all pronounce it to me. So if I get this wrong and sound stupid, then um, none of you will be surprised even slightly because I clearly don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to computer games. And we don't play, I don't play computer games really at all. But Mr. I know I need to stop talking to the children have got very into something called PEZ. That's P-E-S. PEZ, have I said that right? I hope I've said that right. Anyway, it's football. It's basically football. Obviously, as you know, clearly footballing family. And I was like, okay, so they, they do all do it, Mr. I know I need to stop talking to PC. And I, you know, I like to show willing. I'm not a fan of computer games, but I like to show willing. It was Christmas. I was like, come on then, I'll have a go. Oh my goodness me, it is absolutely fucking addictive because you get this little remote control and these football teams and you move the players around the pitch and you try and score goals. It's basically, it's just like real football. Um, exactly the same rules, only you're on a computer. And I absolutely love it, but God, I tell you what, Jamie, you all know Jamie is like the nicest, most mild-mannered kid in the world. Will you get him behind a remote controller on pairs? He is an absolute liability. He gets angry. In fact, the entirety of our PES games, because I, you know, I'm, I'm very enthusiastic, but I wouldn't say that I'm very capable. The entirety of our PES games are literally spent with Jamie there, sort of sitting next to me with the controller. And I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, but I'm not necessarily, you know, I'm not quite as skilled as, as maybe he is. All you can hear from Jamie is, oh my days, oh, mum, pass, what you, mum, oh my days, oh my days. I don't know where this all oh my days thing has come from, but it's very funny. Oh my days, oh my days. It's just, yeah. So I feel that I've got to, I'm going to have to up my PEZ skills this year. But yeah, it's great. It's very, very addictive. Needless to say, Beth is both excellent at it and also easily distracted, much like she is in a, in a game of football as she kind of likes sort of stares off the side of the pitch. But yeah, oh, it's, it's, yeah, it's very, it's very addictive. It's very addictive. So that was Christmas. It was lovely. And then, as I said, we went up to see my mum for New Year, which was fantastic. We had a, a, a great comedy misunderstanding from Beth. So my parents are divorced and my dad has remarried and my mum has a partner and we were chatting about the various members of the of the family and how this all worked and how you know sort of my mum and dad were married and then they got divorced and they're with new partners and Beth went hang on a minute and she referred to the name of my mum's partner she said well they're, they're, they're not partners they're just friends and I said no they're, they're like you know like boyfriend and girlfriend basically they're like that she said oh I didn't realize that and I said well did you not think it was strange that you know granny's partner sleeps in the ring with her at night while we go and stay she said oh no I didn't realize that they were sharing a bed she said I um I thought that he just went in there and he slept on the floor because he wanted to let us have have the beds because he's a really nice bloke and I said oh god love you then today she said actually what I did think she said I did think that granny's partner she said I, I did think that he might have been her butler now my mum's a very you know sort of a very posh lady but she's not quite butler territory I said why did you think that Beth she said, oh, she said, well, he's always making her cups of tea. <laughs> I mean, oh, the inside of children's heads, particularly Beth's head, is a, is a terrifying place. I shared something on, um, actually, I'll share this, I shared this on Twitter this morning. So Beth is obsessed with being allowed to walk home alone from school. She's obviously 11 now. Now, I'm not against kids walking to or from school. In fact, I think it's a good thing, but we live quite a long way away from the school. So I've kind of said, well, maybe in the summer when you've got time to get home from school before it actually gets pitch black out there, we'll, we'll maybe think about it. Anyway, so she hasn't that. So, so today she came into me with her tablet and she's like, right, she said, I've gone on to Google Earth. She said, and I've worked out on Google Earth, I've worked out the, the route from, from school to home. She said, so if I can find it now, if I can walk the route from school to home, 
will you let me walk home from school? And I said, well, all right, we'll have a look and, and then we'll see. Anyway, she starts off on this route and, you know, kind of following her and then, then the map moves and she's like, oh, I don't know where I am, don't know where I am. Oh, I think I know where I am. Where am I? She zooms out. Oh, oh, I'm in America. So on that basis, I probably won't be letting Beth walk home from her school, which, FYI, is not in America anytime soon. Yeah, I think um, she clearly has developed my geographical knowledge, which is which is non-existent. Jamie's been on, on cracking form, as always, other than the all oh, my days moments in pairs. My favourite Jamie moment from the festive period was when he came into... I cooked on New Year's Eve up at my mum's, so I was prepping food in the kitchen. Jamie wandered into the kitchen, and, and apropos of nothing, as Jamie always does, he went, who's that, who's that donkey dude that hangs around with Winnie the Pooh? I was like, what? He said, you know, that, that donkey hangs around with Winnie the Pooh. He said, what's his name? I said, what do you think his name is? He said, oh, I don't know, is it, um... Is I know, it's, um, it's Iglet, isn't it? What the fuck? Who, who or what is, is Iglet? What are you banging on about? I love you. What the fuck? Um, so yeah, so apparently um, Eeyore will now forever be known as, as Iglet. Some kind of like mashup of Piglet and Eeyore, I'm guessing. <laughs> Iglet, for fuck's sake. And then to finish out the year, I mean, I just like, I feel like I want to have a little cry and give you all a, all a virtual hug because I, I, I know it sounds ridiculous, and I'm trying never to write this kind of stuff because I don't think it comes across well when you're writing because it makes you just sound like, a, oh, I never believed I could do it when you're secretly thinking, I knew I could do it. But hand on heart, it doesn't matter how long I, I blog for or even, you know, how many books I write. I think, and I think this is in common with most writers, we have like such crashing insecurity as to whether what we're writing is actually any good at all. And I spend what feels sometimes like half my lifetime going, oh, it's just all fucking shit, isn't it? It's just all rubbish. It's all useless. Like, self-doubt is very real. And I can tell you now, it doesn't go away, no matter how many, as I say, blog posts you write or followers you have or books you write or whatever else you might do. So, obviously, Winning at Life, my second book, was on offer as one of the Amazon bestsellers in December. And you guys made me an Amazon bestseller and... Honestly, I, I I got no words. It's good being an author, isn't it? I have fuck all words or anything, but I have no like. I can't tell you how much genuinely hand on heart that means. I do not take this shit for granted for a single second. I still pinch myself every day that any of this has ever happened to me. And I promise you, to every single one of you who bought the book, or even if you didn't buy the book, or if you bought the book and hated it, or if you didn't buy it and you know kind of just glossed over the post, none of this would have happened without all of you and honestly from the bottom of my heart just the most massive massive thank you it means the world it genuinely does mean the world to me and I know lots of you've been lovely to ask me kind of you know what what's what's next writing wise am I writing another book and I've, I've responded to a couple of of comments on on the blog which you know just to say there's been lots of stuff happening away from the blog and just in you know life and shit like that and just gets in the way and things so I am definitely, I have been working on a couple of things and I'm looking at a couple of things and there's lots of conversations going on and I'll keep you posted on those. But yeah, just just bear with because yeah, sometimes there aren't enough hours in the day, right? There are not enough hours in there and I definitely felt that quite acutely for, for a big chunk of 2021, but I'm working on stuff. I will definitely keep you posted and I'm really excited to see, um, you know, sort of what the next few months might hold writing wise, but genuinely, genuinely hand on my heart. It means so much. Thank you so much. Love you guys. Honestly, fucking mental. Absolutely mental. And I've kind of stayed away from social media for the last sort of 24, 48 hours because I always find New Year a bit of a weird time. Because And I've done it myself, right? I've done lists of, I want to do these things in the, in the next year. And I guess the last two years have taught me that we can make all the plans we like and life sometimes will still come along and shit all over those plans. But, you know, I think in the kind of making plans and resolutions and I definitely get why people feel the need to want to do that particularly given the last couple of years I, th I think sometimes my my fear is that we all run the risk of forgetting all the stuff that is already brilliant about us like you are amazing you are genuinely amazing and we've all got things that we want to change and we want to improve and I'm not saying don't do that because you know that's that's great and it's good to have goals and it's good to have things to look forward to but don't lose in all of that the fact that you are out already absolutely fucking amazing you are you really genuinely are and you might be listening to this and thinking mm, I don't think I believe that and that's okay that's fine that's absolutely fine but I do want you to know that you know you are you are amazing particularly if you think the last couple of years that we've had and you've got through this and you've done this and you've been through some really tough and really shitty times but you've come out the other side you are doing this so by all means have plans and have goals but don't lose how brilliant you already are because I do think sometimes at this time of year 
I do think sometimes, yeah, people people give themselves a knock and they don't, they really, really don't need to. You you are amazing. You genuinely, you genuinely are. I don't really have many goals for, for 2022. I'd, I'd like to stay happy and stay healthy. And I'd like my, my friends and my family and my kids to, to do the same, which, you know, I'd say, oh, those aren't like major goals. But based on the last couple of years, you know, there's, there's been like pretty fucking, fucking big things. There's a couple of things that are a bit scary this year that I want to do that, you know, I'll, I'm sure I'll talk about in, in due course, but that's quite scary, isn't it? When you've got to take that step. And I really, really love that quote, feel the fear and do it anyway. I do, I really do want to do that. You know, sometimes you have to do the scary stuff to get to the really good bits, but but that's quite scary. I'm not very good at stepping outside my comfort zone and I definitely am going to have to do that to achieve some of these things. So I'd like to do that. But like I say, I, I, I want to stay happy. I want to stay healthy. I want to keep writing. I want to keep podcasting. I love that you guys come along on this mad little journey because let's be honest, it's not a proper podcast. It's me rambling on about random fucking shit like cats and Christmas trees. And you come with me on that ride and I absolutely love it. The one thing I hate about podcasting is it's so difficult to get that kind of like two-way dialogue and hear what you guys are thinking or let you input or let you tell me when you think it's a bit shit and, you know, that helps me learn and get better. So I guess if there's anything that you'd like to hear me rambling on about I, I genuinely would love to know if you've got feedback on the podcast the stuff you like if the stuff you don't like I can take it I'm a big girl um you know do do feed it back and I think if you're listening on YouTube you can leave comments and if you're listening on another podcasting platform f- fuck knows how you how you feed back I mean tweet me or you know leave me a message or message me on on Facebook or you can email me at I K I N. St- oh fucking hell it's the acronym of my when i picked the blog title i really really did not think about what it would acronymize down to i k i n t s t at outlook.com there we go oh gosh should have written that one down but yeah you can email me directly but i, I genuinely would love to hear your feedback because it does feel a little bit like shouting into a void sometimes and i'll try and put this up on facebook as well this podcast so you can leave me any feedback there but I do genuinely love to hear hear what you think. And, you know, I hope we can kind of, you know, just all keep on hanging out like this, making each other smile, wondering what my, my Cardo delivery holds. Actually, God, do you want live Cardo news? While I've been doing this, I've actually had an email through from Cardo telling me if I've got any missing items. Let's have a little look, shall we? Oh, I've got, tell you what, I've got a new phone and it's really, it's one of those clever ones that recognises your face. Only because I wear a lot of makeup, if I haven't got full makeup on, it's literally looking at me going, I've got no idea who this person is. So that's gratifying. Okay, so I've got Adam as my driver today from Mercado. Let's have a look. Um, oh, it basically, it's missing something very healthy that I've bought and it's replaced, well, it hasn't replaced it, but alternatively, I've got some extra chips. I mean, I, I see that as a total win. God love you, Ocado. It's like you knew exactly what I would need. So last 24 hours of eating and drinking anything that isn't nailed down, we have so much food, so much food. I, every year, because I'm stupid or a glutton for punishment or, you know, kind of just feel the need to feel feel worthy for for a month or sad mostly, I do dry January every year. So I'm going to be heading off to do dry January. So if you've got your top top tips for non-alcoholic drinks that don't taste as though, like the sugar rush from some of these drinks, comedy aside, I don't think I told you the story last time I was podcasting. I was on a call with my dad the other day who confessed that when he was sort of a few years younger and had been working uh, at it, working in the bar, it was about the time when like Alka Pops were around and stuff like that. And so he was helping out in the bar with a mate of his and the mate said, oh, oh, we've got these, we've got these new drinks come in and showed one to my dad and they looked like, you know, one of those lurid orange Alka Pops. My dad was like, oh yeah, I'll try one of those. So he had it, he was like, oh god blimey that's strong isn't it oh it's gone to my head and yeah all right i'm not driving i'll have another one anyway long story short he had three of these bright lurid orange drinks and by the end of it was going wow god they've really gone to i feel genuinely really quite tipsy and his mate turned to him and went dave what are you going on about and he went well these drinks god they're really strong his mate went they're j2o's not quite as strong as you might think then funny how the mind works isn't it so yeah i will be eating and drinking everything that is not nailed down until first day of of going back to work on on tuesday which fuck knows what day that is because i have no idea where we are or which way up we are right now anyway my loves i hope regardless of what christmas and new year has looked like for you i hope it's been an okay one i hope you've been able to have some lovely times i hope you've looked after you i hope that you too have had more chocolate oranges that you can eat which is surely the greatest bounty known to man but yeah i do hope you've had a happy one and I really do hope as you head into 2022, I hope it's going to be a happy one for, for you too. Look after yourselves, stay safe, and I will be back next week. Lots of love. Bye-bye.